Welcome to Buffalo Camp Day Recap. I'm Thad Brown. This is Carl Jones. Today coming to you from the Bill's Hospitality Tent. We decided it was too hot outside, so we chose the shade and the chairs and the much more relaxed setting to uh, break down Bill's Camp Day number 10 at St. John Fisher on Monday. And this was, in a lot of ways, the, the biggest, the best probably practice of camp so far. Unfortunate because it was a uh, no public fans day. There were VIP fans here, friends and family kind of thing, but it wasn't open to the public because Carl, this practice had juice, this practice had energy, this practice had fights, this practice had highlights, and this practice went you know, over two hours for the first time in camp. It's the third week of camp. This could be around the time where you call the dog days. Now I get it, it's, we're not back in the day, no two a days, nothing right. like that. However, it's that third week, so this is the time where the energy could drop a bit. You know, guys running through the same routine, do I want to be here, all that good type of stuff. So it was good to see Monday first, I guess the second day of the week for these guys. The energy was high. We got guys celebrating after the play, punting balls, guys getting after it a little bit. That's all good to see, especially knowing where we are. First preseason game up in a couple of days. We all love to see that. Unfortunately, Bill's Mafia did not get a chance to see it, but we did, so I love to see it. The one uh, fight of note today was Spencer Brown against, uh, who was the running back? Spencer Brown and Terrell Bernard. It was yes. linebacker, I'm sorry. Spencer Brown and Terrell Bernard. And then uh, Stefan Diggs. Uh, kept it going a little bit after uh, Brown had been separated from Bernard, um, but it wasn't much of anything. And, you know, on the flip side, the energy, the excitement point of view, offense had a really good day today. Um, you know, highlighted by a uh, two-minute drill towards the end of practice where Josh Allen just dropped a ball in the bucket to Trent Sherfield. It was one of those uh, cover two hole plays where uh, you're trying to fit it between the, in this case it was the nickel. I think Taron Johnson was on the inside and over the top of, um, Trey White down the sideline. And when that ball was let go, I thought it was a Trey White pick all the way. And I don't know how Josh got it in there, but he did. Sherfield made a pretty darn good low catch. And it, it was just, it was the highlight, but it was not the only highlight of the day. No, it was good to see the offense, because at times, I, want, I don't want to say they struggled moving the ball up and down the field, but there wasn't any consistency in terms of the big plays. And then Josh Allen hit Gabe Davis on a couple of in-breaking routes, kicked it off, I believe, Stephon Diggs early on. And that throw, which was right in front of us, I swore Trey White was going to make that play. Mm -hmm. We all, I'm looking at Trey the entire play. I'm not even looking at the ball. I'm like, oh, Trey's about to – where does Sherfield come from? This is a hell of a play. Josh makes those throws once every other day and something like that. And that play right there, when we speak about the juice, Sherfield celebrating the entire team, celebrating in that regard. Just awesome to see that, especially because it came right in front of us. The one other thing about the offense I want to talk about quick, and we've been doing a lot with the position battles, you know, guard, corner, um, you know, obviously a linebacker too. I watched a lot of Osiris Torrance today, and I've been watching him pretty much since the pads came on, and I continue to be impressed. Over and over, when I see 64 on the field, almost always he's making the right play, in the right position, he's blocking somebody, which is what you want to see a guard do. I will say that in that hurry-up situation, he did look a little bit over his skis, you know, in terms of wasn't ready to um, understand where he was supposed to be in protection-wise, you know, missed a first snap, Daquan Jones got around him pretty quick, and, and I almost bring it up to point out how unusual it was. Not to say that, that there's a problem, that this is not who this guy has been. So, you know, it's it, a reminder that A, he's human, and B, he is still a rookie, you know. So, but regardless, I've been really impressed with, uh, with Torrance so far. Um, you know, Carl, let's get into the, the press conferences a little bit. One of the guys who talked today was uh, Leonard Floyd, the new defensive end, and he said something that really stood out to you today. Yeah, he's, his two previous stops were in Chicago and the Rams, and they both play those three, four styles where the edge rusher drops back a ton. And he said he felt as if the Bills defense fits his skill set the best because he's attack, attack, attack. He's not really dropping back into coverage as much. The Bills will ask him to do it from time to time, but not nearly as much as he's done it in the past. So he said it allows him to get make plays, get TFLs. So that kind of leads me to believe that a player like him who has already been productive in those styles where he's asked to drop back however many times he believed he was, the fact that he's he's hunting, now the reps might not be as high because the Bills rotate a lot here, but the fact that he said that and made no qualms about it, I was that caught my eye a little bit. Sean McDermott also spoke to the media today, and A.J. Feldman and I yesterday on Buffalo Camp Day Recap talked about how the backup quarterbacks have not been impressive. So McDermott got a question about that today. And the one point he made was that, look, Kyle Allen is here learning a new system. It's still early for him. There's going to be some growing pains. And, and while, look, all of that is logical and to be expected, Kyle Allen still has not looked good. I mean, the only interception today was what seemed like a, a miscommunication on a second team last minute drill. The same thing that the Bills first team dazzled with with the Allen to Sherfield touchdown first snap. 
Kyle Allen throws it to nobody and to being a, a gimme Christian Benford pick, you know, so it, that really is a microcosm of what his camp has been. It just it hasn't been very good. Um, so where Sean McDermott is correct that he's still learning the system, there's still some new stuff, you know, you would, I think, expect more from a backup to this point. We all know that if Josh Allen goes down, that's where the season goes. Yeah. Let's, let's be point blank with that. Having said that, though, there is a, ten, a sense of security where if he did, like you guys alluded to yesterday on Camp Day Recap, where if he did miss, I don't want to say substantial amount, but just whether Two, three, it's – four games. Yeah, yeah even yeah. a quarter or something like that. You know, think guys get nicked up from time to time. Do you feel comfortable with that guy out there? Because I know last year when Mahomes – I'm not trying to like play apples to apples here, but like when Mahomes missed time in that AFC, I believe, divisional game against the Jaguars, Chad Henney walked down the field. Would the Bills feel the same exact way if Kyle Allen was out there? That's what they, they're trying to battle through right now in training camp. And I think the fair answer to that is right now, you would not. I, I don't think you can feel that way about Kyle Allen. We talked a little bit about Osiris Torrance. Um, the rotation at guard stayed pretty much the same. He got most of the reps. Uh, now, I did notice after that drill where Torrance struggled, Ryan Bates came in and had the first team in the next drill. Now, it may have been scheduled because that's consistent, but that is what happened. Um, today was a Terrell Bernard day at linebacker. You know, no real blood there, nothing to talk about. And then at corner, um, you know, where yesterday was Christian Benford, the week before was a lot of Kyer Elam. Today was more of a strong Dane Jackson day with the first team. Yeah, even the walkthrough rep, it, was, it started with Dane, and usually you're like, all right, but what are they going to do for team? It still remained Dane. Benford got a couple first team reps. Kyer was, I believe, mostly second team today. Tried to sneak onto a first team rep early on, which was kind of funny to see. That's but right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. For the open and walk through, <laughs> Kyer was on the field with Dane and Trey, and they all looked at around each other, and Kyer was the odd one out, had to come off the field. So he tried to sneak his way onto the right. first team today. Uh, got a little competitive edge right there. I love to see that. But it was mostly a Dane day where um, not necessarily much ball production, but that's not really his fault. They didn't throw his way. But from what we can tell, it just did his assignment. Like we said, this was a highlight driven practice so we have reached the turkey burger portion of the show where we uh, tell about the the guys who had notable plays and we have a lot so we're going to kind of rip through this quick I'll start first with uh, Dane Jackson actually in one-on-ones he had two reps with um, Gabe Davis where he absolutely just smothered him and, and the first one you know Gabe tried to run a little back shoulder in the sideline Dane was in the way the entire way ball hit him in the back um, I thought he had a really solid drill there and even in practice I think there's one one throw he gave up but for the most part it was pretty solid I'm gonna stay in the DB room Christian Benford the interception was a gimme no doubt about it however when you look at the stat book it doesn't say gimme next to interception it says interception so I'm gonna give his his credit for that but also he had a TFL uh, it wasn't a two-minute situation but it was a team move it period nice to see that when your quarter cornerback especially in this day and age where there's so much space we saw last year that he can tackle in space, and it showed up again today where he would have blown up a receiver screen. Another day where Terrell Dots, I'm sorry, Tyrell Shavers gets into the turkey burger list. Look, number 80, this is the receiver who I think is going to be the surprise camp darling, the guy who if you have a preseason fantasy league, and if you do, find something better to do with your life. But if you do, this is a guy you want to take high because he continues to make plays. Dawson Kincaid is next for me. A rough going in the blitz pickup drill where basically the defensive – players, safeties, and linebackers are blitzing, and then the offensive guys have to pick it up. Struggle. Michael Hyde threw him to the ground. Coaches had to speak with him after the ref, but he didn't let that damper the rest of his practice. He came back, a couple of nice plays, and then the, I believe the play of practice, Terrell Dawson's all over him, P.I. basically, snags it one hand over the middle while he's falling to the ground. Everyone's had to clap for that. Love to see the rookie bouncing back from a, a mistake early on not letting that make him go even, uh, he's even kill with his play, even off the field as well. So love to see that. Thought that was his best play at camp in a camp where he's made a lot of good plays. I'm gonna give a turkey burger to AJ Klein. Haven't heard much about him. He's been, you know, down the depth chart a bit. I think the team knows what they get from him. Today, he was just blowing up third team run drills like it was his job over and over every snap. Um, the, the man doesn't get enough credit. Look, he, he's not a guy who you want to have start, but on the depth chart, he proved why he's valuable today. James Cook, speaking of AJ Klein, who, very physical player. We, anyone who's watched him play, you know, he's a great special teams guy who's not willing, I mean, not scared to put his face anywhere. But James Cook, smaller guy, smallest back, as we talked about, is going to play in the NFL substantial reps. Blitz pickup. Got A.J. Klein twice in mm -hmm. a row. First rep got him. A.J. Klein's like, no, nah, let's run that back. Um, we're not letting that happen. And Cook got him again. And then he also had a good rep against Terrell Bernard as well. For a smaller back to stay on the field, you have to be able to pass block. You've got to be able to protect 17, because if you can't do that, get off the field. The fact that he was able to do that leads me to believe that they have more confidence in him being able to play on third down because that's when he's going to be used the most. Speaking of 17, Josh Allen, Turkey Burger, the, the throw to Trent Sherfield, we cannot over 
play how spectacular a drop in the bucket that was. It wasn't, you know, look, Josh Allen, I think, dazzles us with the zing throws. This was not that. This was a touch throw, dropped it over guy. I mean, just, again, you know, I, I wish I could sit here and show it to you. You know, I wish you had seen it, but it was a really good throw and certainly deserving of Turkey Burger. You talk about the, th uh, the throw. My Turkey Burger is going to be for the catch. Trent Sherfield was on the sideline, so he had to, I don't want to say full-blown dive, but he had to make sure his feet were inbounds, concentrating a bit because Trey White was flying in front of him. So the concentration, the route, all of that good type of stuff, that 17, 16 connection right there was a sight to see. One bonus turkey burger, Keyshawn Johnson, another reserve receiver, went up today and, and yanked the ball out of the air one-handed. He's been okay in camp, um, had some moments, but today had a good one that was worthy of a turkey burger. We are done, right? I'm turkey burgered out. Yeah, that's, I'm, I'm full. I'm bad <laughs> enough to eat. All right. So we are all set for Buffalo Camp Day recap for today. The Bills are off on Tuesday. They will be back at Fisher on Wednesday and Thursday, and then camp is over. But we will be back on Wednesday with another, another edition of Buffalo Camp Day recap. For Carl Jones, I'm Thad Brown. Thanks for watching on RochesterFirst.com. Thanks for listening wherever you get your podcasts. We'll see you again on Wednesday.